Well hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and I'm out here on well it's a reasonably blustery night a bit of wind blowing but it is as clear as a bell in all directions here and the reason I'm here tonight is to revisit a topic that I think deserves a fair bit of discussion and that is polar aligning our star trackers here in the southern hemisphere. Now I have talked about this at length in the past but I wanted to put together this video to revisit that subject because I know a lot of you still have a lot of problems with that. Now for those of you in the northern hemisphere everything that I'm going to talk about in this video applies to you as well. It's just that um, here in the southern hemisphere we, we, we do not have a pole star so no Polaris uh, in the north for you guys to line to but nevertheless I hope you find this video interesting anyway so first things first I'm just going to get my gear together here in the back of the car and we're going to set up and see how we go now when it comes to polar aligning a lot of people get a little bit scared about it because uh, it's too complicated uh, too many things to think about and you know it really doesn't have to be complicated and this video is an attempt to simplify all of those steps required to make it work but there certainly are steps and so I want to try and run you through those steps in some sort of order that makes sense and hopefully by the end of the video well you'll have a bit more of a handle on it so the first thing that we are required to have is a good tripod now I've actually got two of these tripods here because I'm going to use two star trackers tonight because I want to demonstrate to you the fact that you can use this method with any star tracker at all. In fact, I have four star trackers in total. Now, one of those is the Benro Polaris, and of course, that doesn't need polar aligning in the in the sense of uh, traditional polar aligning. But the other three trackers I have do, and so it's something that most of you, I'm sure, will come across. So a good tripod. Now, a tripod's really important because it takes a fair bit of weight. Now, when you have a star tracker, so I've got a couple here. Oh, gee, I've lost it. Where is it? Here we go. Here's my uh, Skywatcher Star Adventurer Mini. <clears throat> this is probably my favorite out of all of these star trackers. I just love this thing. It's small, compact, lightweight, really quick and easy to set up. I've also got the full-size Skywatcher Star Adventurer here somewhere <laughs> in the back of my car. Hang on. Here we go. Oh. Now, I just want to show you something. Notice how it's got the red light. It's been turned on. I accidentally turned that on when I pulled it out of the bag and that is a major problem with this Star Trek. I know a lot of you have had that happen to you when you put it in your bag and it just turns on uh, and of course it runs the batteries down flat so that's just uh, one of the gotchas that is really easy to happen with this particular model but apart from that this thing is as solid as a rock it is fantastic tracker and I would totally recommend uh, well both of these star trackers so i'm going to demonstrate both of them and uh, just give you a few clues now i am going to be using a phone app to do my polar aligning and as i've showed you in previous videos i do this all the time why do i do that well i've finally found some apps that i think are accurate enough to get the job done and so i use it and it is really really quick to set up now another critical element for polar aligning using the methods I'm going to show you is some sort of way of holding your phone to your tripod mount and this is an adapter which was sent over to me from New Zealand from Skylabs great company New Zealand southern hemisphere and it is uh, a plastic nylon very strong but I've got one other one here now if you have a look at this one it doesn't look a whole lot different except I made this one. This is made out of a hunk of wood and a little bit of nylon plate that I found at Bunnings Hardware Store. So here we have two plates. So I'm gonna show you both of these tonight. The one that's professionally made and the one that's homemade by me. And I just wanna see how good they both perform. By the way, I'm using Android phone. So I'll talk about the iPhone, but I use Android phone. So the apps I'm doing here will be useful for both phone systems, but I'm using Android. But one thing to consider about all of this is the fact that you cannot use phones around metallic objects like the car 
or uh, I, I tried in, when I was in Tasmania polo lining on a, a big metal platform and it just went crazy. So I'm going to move the tripod away from the car to demonstrate my method but you'll see it is so very simple. Okay so what I've done here I've set my tripod up probably about five or six meters away from the car there's nothing else metallic around the place here so there won't be any interference when I get my phone app going but the first thing I have to do is actually uh, get my tripod base level so firstly I've set it up here on the side of the road and as I said to you it is windy so what I'm going to do in a minute once I get this lined up polar aligned I'm going to drive the car over and park it right there in the middle of the road here to act as a windbreak and I do this all the time and it does make a difference so the last thing I want is for my camera to be buffeted around with the wind so you know it's not ideal to have the wind like it is but that's one way that I can get around it so first things first I'm going to use this my tripod here has a uh, a ball on the top or what's known as a bowl head and it makes leveling the top of the tripod really really easy okay so I've got a little two-way bubble level here and by adjusting here you can see how I can just rotate it in any direction and all I need to do is just get those two bubbles level not very difficult that took about five seconds to get that right and tighten this up nice and tight and then what I'll do I'll just remove the bubble level and then I'll just place my mount for my tracker on there instead so now there's one other thing I want to show you here this is a vital piece of equipment and this is a rotating base now I know you'll say to me oh well there's already a rotating base on these Skywatch or, or other brand of trackers but to, to be honest with you I don't like them they're not efficient this is a much cleaner much better option in my opinion uh, I think it works a lot better so that's what I like to use and you can see it there just screws on and now I have the ability just by adjusting that to move it around in a very precise manner and so I bought a couple of those because I use them on all my tracker tripods all right now I'm just about to get the smartphone adapter out and my phone but the first thing to do and I think you should do this every single time you use a smartphone to polar align and that is to calibrate the compass how do you do that well you just get the phone in your hand and just do a big figure eight just like this a few times with your phone now don't ask me how that works that's just what works it's it's the same for any phone you just do it into a figure eight and it somehow calibrates the mechanism the compass and everything else inside the phone so now I'm going to apply this to the bracket all right so you can see here that I've mounted the base of my Skywatcher Star Adventurer onto my tripod so that's what it looks like and this phone adapter just slides down into that base so it's got a wedge already built into it and it tightens on just like that now in this case I'm going to be using an app called Sky Safari 7 Plus so as you can see I've got that placed inside that bracket it just sits there like that now there are a number of adjustments which I will run through later on to make sure that this works the way that it should but essentially what I'm going to do is enable what's called the compass mode which basically puts this into a live view scene and you can see there that if I move my uh, tripod bracket around it just moves it to and fro and because I've had this aligned previously you can see there that that is beautifully aligned there facing you know you're going to laugh at me here but this is facing the north celestial pole why the north celestial pole okay so the way that this is designed is that the cradle mount here has the phone on the axis to point to both the north and south celestial pole but because I'm facing down to the ground it's much easier to read it's more comfortable and you can see that it's in a comfortable place now if I had to, this bracket facing up into the south celestial pole remember I'm here in the southern hemisphere that's I'm going to be looking up like this the phone is not going to sit properly in this cradle it's a lot more difficult so the way that this is designed is to face the north celestial pole it's exactly the same plane so it doesn't matter which pole I face to 
because if I'm facing down in underground into the north, that suits me fine because the actual wedge of the mount here is facing up into the sky into the south. Works beautifully. Now just before I move on too far, there's a couple of other things I want to show you and demonstrate. For example, I'm going to be showing you Sky Safari 6 Plus as well as 7 Plus. And the other thing I'm going to do is show you on a different phone. Because a lot of people say to me, oh, it works fine on your phone, it doesn't work on my phone. Well, I've got another Samsung here. So the original phone I've got up here is a Samsung Galaxy S21. So it's not the latest model, but it's, it's a newer one. This is the Samsung Galaxy S10 model. So this is a few years old now. So well, let's just have a look and see what the difference is. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna select Sky Safari 6 Plus, get that going, put it into the cradle here, and do exactly the same thing. Press compass, and you can see there, it is lined up exactly in the same place as the Sky Safari 7 Plus. So that's a good thing. Now sometimes people have said to me that when they do this, the phone jumps around a fair bit. Now you can see on this one it jumped around a little bit there, but now it seems to have settled. Let's just move that a fraction over. So it's jumping like that. Now we don't like the jumps, but it will settle. Yeah, um, it's, it's asking me about internet connection here a few times, so that could be an issue. Um, I haven't tried this one before, but anyway, now you can see that it is actually aligned according to the phone at least. So let's try it. I'm going to be using a 50 millimeter focal length lens because if there's any imperfections with my tracking, you'll notice it much more on a little bit more longer focal length. So 50 mil is what I'm going to use. Let's get it out and see how we go. All right, well, as you can see here, I've moved my car to create a bit of a wind break. I've got two trackers, Skywatcher Star Adventurer Mini over on this side, Skywatcher 2i on this side. And I'm gonna use the same camera and just switch it from both mounts. And the idea is to try and establish if I've got good alignment. Now this one is lined up using my Samsung Galaxy S21. This one is lined up using my Samsung Galaxy S10 with no internet connection. So let's see what happens and we'll compare some results. So I was having a little bit of trouble with the wind that was coming in gusts, but overall, the trackers worked really, really well. And by the way, I did try out my homemade adapter as opposed to the Skylabs adapter. It was probably a couple of degrees variation, which is pretty much what I expected considering my skills in the woodworking department are not that great, but I, alternated between the two phones and the two tracking mounts, and I was really pleased with the results that I was getting. I have shot numerous images with both of these mounts with all sorts of combinations, and to be honest with you, all of them look fantastic on the back of the camera, but I've got to have a look at them on a bigger screen to be absolutely sure. So I think what we'll do now, I'm going to pack up, I'm going to go home, it's very late, it's after one o'clock. Have a look on the computer and we'll do a bit of a wrap up. I'll show you some other images that I've shot around here as well. I've been a busy boy since I last spoke to you. So let's go back to the studio and have a look on the computer. So you can see here, these are some images I shot initially with the Star Adventurer Mini. And this was polar aligned with my Skylabs bracket. And you can see here, if we zoom in, this is a 60 second shutter speed, f2.8 ISO 1600. We've got really nice tracking, good sharp stars. Everything looks fantastic all the way across the frame. Happy with that. Then I went to two minutes, exactly the same settings, same tracking. Actually, I wanna show you this one. This was affected by wind. So that is not a tracking error. The wind got up and gusted very heavily. So that's what affected that one. So I'll show you the next one. Okay, so this one is taken with the Star Adventurer 2i. That's 60 seconds. So once again, very good tracking. But remember, these two were uh, polar aligned using different phones. So that's good that both of these phones had good results. Now you can see here, I've gone to 120 seconds and that looks pretty good as well. That's two minutes. Now I never go beyond two minutes with my uh, images and this is remember at 50 millimeter focal length so this is pretty good result 
Let's go to this one. Uh, this went to four minutes. So this is likely to have star trailing. And you can see there, yes, it does. Not too bad, but it is star trailing for sure. And I wouldn't want to use that. But uh, remember, this is at 50 millimeter focal length. So I think if I was shooting this at 20 millimeter focal length, you'd hardly see any of that trailing. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's fine. So I want to show you some other ones here. This one, I think, is back on the Star Adventurer Mini. So this is to a two minute shutter speed. And yep, looks great. Good sharp stars there. I'm zooming a long way in. It's on the corner. So yeah, there's no, there's no star trailing in that. Very happy with that. Uh, th now this one here is at 240 seconds. So that's four minutes again. And yeah, once again, we've got the star trailing. So this is on the Star Adventurer Mini. So both of them introduced a little bit of star trailing at four minutes. It's not overly bad, but it's there. Now remember, 50 millimeter will show this up more. And a couple more here. This went back to 60 seconds. And you can see the stars are fantastic. So most of my work is 60 seconds. Sometimes I go to two minutes at 120 seconds, but generally speaking, that's what I'd be shooting. And I'm really, really happy with these. So I wanted to show you these because I used my homemade version of the Skylabs mount to shoot these. And this is pointing into a little bit different area of the sky. And you can see there, that's a pretty good polar alignment. Now this is only 60 seconds. So, but anyway, with that, I'm quite happy. 60 seconds, no problem. Let's move to another one here. What have we got here? This is 120 seconds. So this is two minutes. And once again, that is also pretty good. It's, it's slightly, if, if I'm really, really fussy, I can see a little bit more movement, I think, in there. But it's, gee, it's not bad. For a homemade piece of gear out of Bunnings, I'd be happy with that. Let's move on. Uh, I shot this one at three minute shutter speed. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, definite trailing in this one. So I wouldn't be happy with that, but I'm still stretching the boundaries here. Let's move along here because I shot this on the Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i, and this is 240 seconds, 50 millimeter focal length. So yeah, definite trailing. So it doesn't matter which uh, mount I'm on, I'm still getting trailing at those longer shutter speeds, which is exactly what I expected. So I'm pretty happy though. The, these results are encouraging because I'm using standard equipment, standard phone, standard mount. Now I'm back to 60 seconds and I fully expect this to be great. And uh, yeah, that's perfect. No trailing, absolutely amazing. These days I'm shooting nearly all of my Nightscape tracked shots at 60 seconds anyway. So I'm able to get away really well just using the gear that I've demonstrated in this video. So on the night I shot using my Astro modified Nikon Z6 with the 50 millimeter focal length. And you can see here, this is one such image and I'm going to show you now some shots that I blended with some foregrounds which were in the region as well, just to demonstrate the ability of these tracking mounts for getting some superb images. Just before we finish this video, I wanna show you some tips to set up in Sky Safari 7 Plus. So let's open that up now. And the first thing we need to do is go into the menu bottom left and click on settings. Now you'll see current time, current location, these are a given. Make sure if you have the current time that you have daylight savings set, 
automatic daylight saving time as you can see there. Uh, current location, well that will depend on your phone but you can actually manually put that in as well. Now let's go down to horizon and sky. So we look at transparency there, it says show horizon and sky and I like to tick as transparent with a line. That just gives you an idea of where the horizon is. It's not critical, but that's what I like to do. Uh, everything else is pretty good, but let's go down to grid and reference. Click on that. It's very important you press show grid with equatorial coordinates. And down a bit further, reference points show celestial poles. These are very important. Now, let's uh, go out of the settings menu there and go down to this bottom menu where it says observe. Let's click on that. Now, in this particular version of the app, we click on scope display. Now, you'll notice in here there are custom field of views. So if there's nothing in this, you cre create a field of view and you can create that circle to be the particular size that you want. Now, I've set mine to, I think it's four degrees. Yeah, there it is, four zero. Uh, but you can make it anything you want. That's not a problem. So we'll just hop out of that. But up in the top corner here, I want to draw your attention, these little lines here, which is a menu. And if we click on those two, you will notice here there are some more settings. Now, it took me a while to find this. Very important to click crosshairs at the top there and also to show even if not connected to telescope. Make sure they are shown and ticked and then you will get the little grid there with the crosshairs and as soon as you put this into the compass mode you will be able to line up the celestial pole without any problems at all. The Sky Safari app versions 6 and 7 both work really well as I've demonstrated in this video and they're available for both Android and Apple devices. So I strongly suggest if you're going to purchase this software to go for the plus version. It is a little bit more, but it gives you a few things that the basic version does not have, which you will find very handy for your exploration of using this app. Thank you so much for watching, and I really hope this video helps you to attain great polar alignment, particularly those of you here in the Southern Hemisphere. See you in the next video.